right, so today what, what we're going to be talking about is mental health with regards to, um, to performance. So your qualifications are, what are they? I am a business psychologist and an executive coach and I'm also the managing partner for a leadership development company called Turning Point Leadership in the wow. UK. Uh, so, okay, so business psychologist, what's, just give me a little bit of context. Essentially, I apply science and, in particular, psychology to the world of work. Right. So I get to work with um, leaders from some of the largest companies in the world. I coach CEOs, executive teams, boards, um, leadership teams, essentially, from, for example, the largest, largest beauty company in the world, L'Oreal, the largest luxury goods company in the world, LVMH. Who's um, that? I don't, that's the LVMH is the group that owns Louis Vuitton. Is that Vuitton. Louis Vuitton? Yeah, Moa Tennessee, Ooh. all the luxury brands, Givenchy, oh. Christian Dior, etc., etc. Okay. And I also work with banks, finance, so the largest bank in the world, BNP Paribas, um, and the United Nations as well. So it's quite broad in terms of sectors, but um, really exciting to work with all these big organizations. Okay, so, so we, we're talking about just my, my mental well being. In the, in, with, with regards to performance, so we're talking about leaders, executives, in, in that type of, type of context. So, question for you. So, when I feel like, so I'm, I'm in a position, I've got responsibility. When I feel like, I just feel like I am losing control, what's actually going on? Well... That's the question that I get the most because actually most of my clients are people that have to deal with extreme levels of pressure and demands and extreme levels of responsibility as well. Is that, is that contextual? Meaning, do I have to be the head of Louis Vuitton to have extreme levels of pressure or is that contextual to the pressure of responsibility? Actually, there's all sorts of pressure and people will experience pressure in different ways. Right. Um, but I guess if you bring context into it, when you think about the scale and the scope of responsibility that some people have to deal with, um, you know, it's very different to manage, um, you know, you, you can manage a household, uh, which will come with its levels of pressure and demands. Yeah, um, so, so essentially what I'm asking is, is, we're not talking about everybody who's leading a multinational corporation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about, um, I'm losing control. What's going on? Mm -hmm. it, it could be well, I pastor a church. Yeah, it yeah. could be. So it doesn't have to be. This is how you cope when you've so-called hit the mm. the higher echelons of multinational, multi-billion-pound or dollar companies. This is relative to people carrying responsibility. Exactly. Okay. And, and like I said, everyone will carry and will experience uh, different levels of pressure and demand. And that's, and that's what generates those feelings of you know, losing control. And you can experience that at school when you're um, going through exam season. You can experience that when you're the CEO of Louis Vuitton, for example. Okay. So what's going on? So what's going on is essentially that the, the, we have our brain has been hardwired actually to deal uh, with pressure and to deal with the demands of life. So essentially you have all the right mechanisms to be able to, to, to cope. Um, but what most people don't understand is how to use uh, those mechanisms and how, um, how to ensure that your body has the right conditions and your mind and your brain has, you, you're setting everything up to win basically and to be able to deal with those pressures. Um, what's interesting about most um, the way most people will approach this is that um, very often people tend to think that you know if they do certain things, if they develop certain skills or competencies or gifts, then they will be able to um, deal with things or reach success, whatever oh. that is. And actually, the biggest uh, gift that you have is yourself and really understanding how your brain works, how your body works. Um, and how it's supposed to function in an optimal and integrated way is actually the secret to be able to deal with pressure. Okay. So for example, if you think about the way your nervous system works, um, you have uh, what we call the autonomic nervous system or the ANS, which essentially is the autopilot of, of your brain. The autonomic nervous system makes sure that you keep breathing while you sleep. You It, it controls all the involuntary 
um, almost automatic yeah. things that need to work in your body to keep you alive and to keep you functioning. And actually it has two branches and these are two sides of the same coin if you like. They do not operate without the other and they are not independent of the other. They are literally two sides of the same coin that can only be spent uh, with both working um, uh, both, simultaneously. Both but in, yeah. Exactly, both right. being healthy. And these two branches are the sympathetic nervous system or the SNS which is also known as the fight or flight response mode, and the parasympathetic nervous system, um, which is also known as rest and digest mode. Now, like I said, these two have been designed to work in balance. They, you, we need both of these. Um, the SNS or the sympathetic nervous system, the fight flight, yes. is externally driven. And it kicks in uh, in response to external triggers in the environment, in what's happening around us, etc. Whereas the parasympathetic is internally driven. It's uh, it's all about um, making sure that your everything in your body is focused on yourself. And it's exactly what's um, happening when you're when you're sleeping, for example, to ensure that your brain is regenerating that um, you're able to step back in your daily life instead of carrying on with the stress and the demands and the um, and, and all the external triggers that are so it's like the treadmill that exactly you, that's you feel the like I'm on this exactly yeah. so it's what what's happening there is that you, you're if the longer you stay in the treadmill the quicker you will feel like everything is out of control so essentially what's happening there is you have these two ways of operating in your brain and until you understand how to take control and how to restore the internal balance, you will feel like things are out of control. And eventually if you keep operating like that, something will break. I can remember once we were having a conversation and you said, if, if you don't take control or mm -hmm. I don't know if you used exactly that word, but um, you can probably explain it better in a moment. But you said your brain's got a switch mm. and it will switch off until it feels like your body's ready to switch you back on. And you can't switch it on. You can't switch it off, but your brain will switch it off. Mm. And when you're ready, it'll switch it back on. Is that just explain that a little bit? Because I think that's what, you know, sometimes when you feel like Suddenly it's like, I can't cope, I can't cope, I can't cope, now I'm finished. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, essentially what's happening inside of you when, for example, um, when your sympathetic nervous system is switched on, if you like, um, what's happening there is, um, uh, again, you, you've been, everything in your brain has been designed to keep you alive. Um, that's the primary function of um, not only the sympathetic nervous system, but the parasympathetic, the whole autonomic nervous system. And in fact, all of your brain structure has been designed primarily to keep you alive. And you have all sorts of switches in your brain wow. um, that, uh, that, that, will, that are there and they will just um, be switched on with different... Um, levels of uh, triggers and uh, threats, etc. When once your brain perceives a threat, there's all sorts of different switches that will um, that will be switched on automatically because they are your inbuilt self-defense mechanisms to keep to make sure that you stay alive. Um, now, what your brain doesn't do very well automatically is uh, discern the level of real threat that these different triggers represent. For example... So which means if your brain doesn't do that very well, that means we have the power to actually direct things. So exactly. So well, these are what, what I mean by that is that the, the um, for example, the, the sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system um, is, is uh, activated by external threats in your environment. Now these external threats could be anything from an urgent email um, from your boss or a stakeholder, something that is, you know, some, some, uh, some form of disaster that's just happened in the organization or in your household, whatever your life, whatever your context is, it could range from that all the way to, you know, there's a tiger running towards you, wanting to kill you. 
So some of these, this is, these are very different threats, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But your, the same system will be activated for both of these. In other words, what the sympathetic nervous system will activate in your body is when it perceives an external threat, which it does not discern the level of you know, real threat okay, yeah. automatically, that's what I mean. But when it perceives a certain threat, what it does is it automatically increases your, um, your heart rate, it gets, it makes sure that your muscles have the right level of blood and oxygen to get up and go or to punch someone in the face if needed. It, um, it, it does all these um, automatic reactions and responses that will uh, make you feel like you either want to run away or you want to fight someone or you feel completely blocked. Right. Fight, flight or freeze. These responses are there to, again, to protect you, to keep you alive, but they are not necessarily helping you. Now, this adrenaline rush that you experience when you, um, when you interpret external threats in your environment, um, sometimes they are needed and they are necessary, but not always. And what this does is if you stay in the sympathetic nervous system type of functioning for too long, um, your body will experience a number of um, symptoms, such so as... That's the, that's the... I just feel like I'm on this treadmill that's wearing me out. Exactly. I'm, it's because I'm staying on this side of the coin. Absolutely. If right. you use that for too long without restoring with the parasympathetic nervous system type of functioning, which is literally the rest and digest type of functioning, if you stay on that one for too long without the other, you are out of balance. And balance is the most important element uh, of mental health. It's actually balance. Right. What a lot of what's interesting about this is that a, there's actually a lot of understanding already about what um, when you think about science and in particular neuroscience. There's actually a lot of understanding of the brain when it's what it looks like when it's broken, for instance, because really medicine is about symptom relief primarily. And because of that, there's a lot of evidence on what actually happens in your brain when something is broken. But what still okay. needs to, what, what still isn't clear enough for people, and even there's, there's, there's not enough in terms of body of research on what the healthy brain looks like. But what we do know is that the healthy brain is the brain that is able to function as a whole. So workplace, performance, pressure, all of that sort of thing. I spend way too much time over here mm -hmm. because I've not understood it. Not enough time here. My brain breaks. Is that a little bit the same way as I'm a, I'm a runner and I break my leg, that I can't run until my... Absolutely. Until my bone Absolutely. is healed, then I can run again. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, good, um, that's a good image. It's a good analogy. It's exactly the same thing. Okay. So, so part of the challenge is, 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 is this, I've got, to get, I've got to get some balance. Yeah. Because often people say a, a, balanced, a balanced, balanced life. I don't, I don't think we think enough about balance of these two aspects of life, which is a daily thing, not a yearly thing. I, you get to a place, right? So we're, I'm spending too much time here. Mm. And now this whole fatigue thing, I'm just, I just feel so tired. I feel mm. so... Mm. What's going on there? What's... So again, what's going on there is it, if, if we use, if we go back to your analogy, your sports analogy, um, if you keep running, for instance, extreme, what we know of that is that extreme uh, intense exercise does not lead to strength. It actually leads to something breaking. It yeah. leads to burnout um, physically in the muscles. And it's exactly the same thing with your brain and with the way that you're functioning. If you stay in sympathetic nervous system mode for too long, you will burn out. You will feel extremely fatigued, not just so, physically okay. tired, uh, but mentally tired as well. Ex explain to me if I stay in extreme sympathetic. Mm. What does that explain if I stay there? What does, 
What does staying there? What mm. do you mean by that? If I stay what, what, there, what that actually what means? Or define some of the things yeah. for me, just to. So it'll it'll be things like being constantly uh, switched on, for instance, uh, not taking breaks, not just physical rest breaks, but mental reset pauses. Um, it means, for example, not staying. Uh, in the urgent type of functioning, which is the SNS, the sympathetic nervous system, is the, it's the urgency, everything is urgent all the time, everything is important, everything is urgent. If you stay, it's staying there in that headspace for too long. It's um, literally not taking any breaks at all during your work day. Um, and when I say breaks, I mean physically removing yourself from your space if necessary what is it that you're doing and, and, and you know and again I deal with people that are operating with high levels of pressure and demands and and where sometimes even myself um, sometimes you have to be stuck in to a particular topic or subject for yeah. you know for, for hours um, but actually it is about listening to yourself and listening to how you're feeling and allowing yourself to feel like actually you need to take a break. You need to think about something else. You need to go for a walk in the park. You need to reconnect with nature if needed. Um, there are a number of things that we can um, that we can share in terms of tips and uh, and resources to help you yeah, all right. balance so, yeah. so and I was gonna, switch the other one on. I think a lot of people get themselves in that place where I just feel tired all the time. Mm. And it's not even, it's not even physically tired. It's I'm because that's I think the difference between being tired and fatigued. You know I, yeah. you know I can remember growing up I was tired lots, but that's just because I, I was partied too hard or I, worked you know did something for I was physically tired, and you wake up you go to bed you wake up and you feel great. Yeah. But sometimes you can get yourself in a place where you go to bed, have a good night's sleep and wake up tired. Yeah. That's fatigue, is it? It is. Or you, you, you're so tired, but you can't even sleep. <laughs> yeah. um, because again, you're constantly operating. Your brain um, has, has stayed in that mode of being constantly switched on to the point, and because you're so far down the line of being out of balance, that again, the other wonderful thing about the human brain is that it adapts very quickly to the good things and the bad things as well. It Which is good news, quick. isn't it? Because it's, it's great news. Because if, if I'm going down this road, yeah, I can turn around and come back down this road. Yeah, but it also means that if you've gone down that road uh, too far for, for too long, turning, turning in a different direction will be very difficult. That's what I mean, because, okay. because yeah. your brain will just adapt to a situation, into a pattern, and to a particular routine um, very well. It's very adaptable, um, which means that if you happen to have the wrong routine, um, you will be very stuck right. in right. that way. And it will, you can change, you actually can. Right. So we come will, sometimes so use it the feels word again. very use the word again, routine. Let's yeah. Really ask another another question on so you're, you're busy and you go 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 but some, you feel like I don't know what's going on with my memory yeah I, I, um, I feel like I can't concentrate so then I, then I label myself I've got AD whatever it is and, yeah. Yeah. I, and really have I really got an inability to concentrate have I really got an inability to remember things or am I have I am I in a place mm. that I can get back from. Yeah. So again, obviously, you would need uh, you would need to have a proper diagnosis and an analysis of what those symptoms are, etc. But in most Broad cases, stroke. Broad stroke. exactly. Broad but stroke. in most cases, it's actually the latter. It's actually a consequence, or so the memory decay, or the cognitive uh, decline that people will experience, not just in terms of memory uh, loss, but also difficulty in concentration okay. when you when you analyze what's actually happening in their lives, you find out that it's, it, it really is another consequence of being out of balance right. and staying in that place of urgency and fight and flight for too long without resetting, without restoring balance and without restoring integration, which is the essential characteristic of a healthy um, brain is, again, it's the wholeness, it's integration, it's balance. 
Um, so again, it's probably the latter. It's, uh, it's difficulty in concentration, memory loss, extreme fatigue, all of those are symptoms of staying in the sympathetic nervous system functioning for too long. Okay, so stress. I'm stressed. This, I feel like everybody and everything wants something from me. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on when that? Yeah, and again, it's the, it's the, um, uh, the psychological weight of, um, of demands. And, and, and it's the level, it's how you, your brain interprets that. Again, that is a, a, an internal reaction. So am I stressed or am I pressured? Yeah, no, you are pressured. And what's because the What's you're, the difference? So because you're pressured, you experience the, what we call the negative effects of stress. But okay. actually stress can have positive effects as well. Because I think sometimes, you know, you, people get, you get confused. Yeah. Like I'm stressed and you might go, well, actually not stressed, you're pressured. Mm. But it's a, it is stress, but mm. it's, not, it's not stress, it's pressure. Yeah. And the only thing that differentiates the two, do you know what it is? No. It's your internal um, switch. It's which, which switch do you choose to flick? In, right, in those yeah. situations. Yep. That's the only thing that differentiates the two, is how you choose to respond to it. Because if you choose to take control, you don't feel the negative effects of stress. So you don't, you don't feel, feel the pressure. pressure. Yeah. Right. You don't feel the pressure. And if you don't choose to, is that when you do dumb things to relieve the pressure? Exactly. Right. So again, it's all about how you approach things, how you view things. but. It, but again, you, it, you need to understand what's happening in your brain in order to be able to make those decisions and, and to be able to position yourself in a way where you, yes, you see the demands, yes, everyone needs something from me, but actually I'm in control. I, if, as long as you stay in control, then you don't feel the pressure and you're able to cope because we've, we've been hardwired to cope. Yeah, because I think that, as you keep saying that, because I'm now filtering through, through myself, right? Uh. I go, I couldn't, like, um, you know, um, just last night, I'm sitting there and I think, the, the washing machine beeped at me. I thought, <laughs> even the washing machine wants my attention. Then the clothes dryer started beeping and then the cat started meowing. And you sort of feel like, like, everything, even the machines want me, right? Yeah. Do you, go, you know what I'm trying to say? And then you go, if you, you just made a choice, if you choose to. Yeah. Right, so choose to what? what? Yeah, so, so you can either, so th for example, in those situations, all of those can either be interpreted as external threats or demands, requests for something of you, whether it's, oh great, I need to go and feed the cat, or now I need to go and switch off the machine, or now I need to put I the I didn't even think the cat was hungry, I just <laughs> wished it had shut up. Exactly, but, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but they all represent, they yeah. can represent different all sorts of things, things yeah. for you, for your brain. Now, it, it, it is in your control. The, the reaction, the way your body responds to those external triggers is in many ways automatic. But what you can do is you, you can restore control by bringing in another approach to that, another intention when it comes to how, wh wh what do you do with that? Um, and that's what I mean by taking control. Because that you, you can't stop your body from feeling a, an automatic yeah. reaction okay. when you see mm. a threat or something, but you can take control in terms of choosing how you behave or how you respond, how you react, even internally. So if I'm, I'm in this place where I feel like, okay, I just feel, so I'm, I'm, I guess, learning how to differentiate between I'm stressed, mm. conceptually, similar but versus now it's pressure yeah. right so it still comes back to this this yeah. balance between the two yeah right yeah. so and I, i've talked to people sometimes or even sometimes experienced it in myself hmm. where you end up where you get this it's like an emotional turmoil going on hmm. on the on the inside hmm. What's that? What's happening there? And not just emotional turmoil, sometimes it's um, emotional numbness almost. People right. feel that, uh, sometimes people say that they can't, they, they either feel things too much or they can't feel anything, right? Um, well, back to how your brain works. Um, you have, we talked about the nervous system. 
Um, but there's another system that's also operating at the same time in your brain, which is what we call the chemical system. So the nervous system deals with, like I said, the, especially the autonomic nervous system is dealing with all the involuntary uh, responses that need to happen um, in, your, in your body in order to keep you alive, yeah. whether in terms of uh, reacting to threats or whether it's in terms of uh, resting and staying alive while you sleep, etc., etc. Um, the other system that is operating simultaneously in your body is the chemical, what we call the, the neurochemical system, and that really is where emotions are flowing, if you like, yeah. in your body. And what are emotions? Emotions are actually data. They're nothing but data. They're a long uh, chain of amino acid that runs through your body. They are neurochemicals that travel through your body that are triggered by all sorts of things that are happening externally, but also internally with your nervous system. And emotions, that, that chemical emotional system that is running in your body is, is actually a feedback system. Emotions are giving feedback to your brain, to your nervous system, for instance, um, in order to generate actions, reactions, behaviors. That's what emotions are. And actually it takes, do you know how long it takes for your body to absorb the emotion, emotion chemicals? Six seconds. It only takes wow. six seconds, your body will absorb those emotion chemicals, which can then trigger all sorts of different reactions. Now, when you are in that place... Of, so is that why when you, 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 you sort of feel like, I feel like I'm just emotionally worn out? Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Well, okay, two things there. First of all, when you're in that place um, that we're talking about of, you know, just feeling like things that are out of control, extremely fatigued, um, on top of everything else you will probably be experiencing some form of emotional either detachment or extreme um, emotional reactions and responses to things. That again could be a symptom that you're not only um, not um, it, creating the right balance in terms of your nervous system, but you're also not listening to what the other system is trying to tell you because again, your emotions are data. If you don't listen to them, if you don't even have emotional literacy, for instance, to, um, to if you don't, what I mean by yeah, that is, yeah. if you don't even know how to name your emotions, if you don't allow yourself to feel your emotions in your body, if you keep suppressing your emotions also, because we know that a lot of people have been socialized or conditioned to um, suppress, suppress emotions, emotion, yeah. or to think, you know, most people, most of my clients say to me that they make decisions based on logic. <laughs> people don't know that actually 95% of the decisions that they make on a daily basis are emotional. Come from wow. emotions, not logic. Wow. So if you if you don't understand this, and if you don't, um, and please note, I'm not saying that, that you should act on your emotions. That's not what we're talking about. But if you don't develop the awareness to understand what your body, how your body works and to allow yourself to feel your emotions, process your emotions, um, you, it will result in this type of symptom. Which is the whole concept of, um, of I feel I'm out of control. Yeah, exactly. So if, I, if my emotions are running everything. Exactly. I'm out of control. Exactly. But I can I can get if all of these things we've been talking about is it to simplify it as be I'm I can I'm out of control mm. versus I'm in control. Yeah. Which is not being a control freak, of course. I guess. So all of these things that are just just questions are mm. all. It's I'm out of control in these areas if I'm living my life constantly on this side of the coin. Yeah. So. So you, you kept coming back to um, imbalance yeah. and all of that, so and routine. Mm. So unpack that, the thought of I've got to get into, help me get into routine. What do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So the way I would unpack this idea of routine uh, is actually looking at um, something that I would call productive habits. How can you put in place the right habits that will facilitate this balance and this taking control? Um, 
And again, I, I said earlier that uh, your brain will adapt. Uh, it's, it's really one of its most remarkable characteristics, actually. It's the ability to adapt. But that can be a good thing or a bad thing because it can quite easily adapt to, to the wrong type of routine and the wrong type of environment. Well, you, I can remember you, in a conversation we were having once and you, you said to me, if I get it correctly, you said, mm. if you don't put yourself in a routine, your brain will. Yeah, no, it will. It, it actually will. If, even, even when people think... Even if it's it, not good. Yeah, exactly. And, and even when... Because, again, you've, you've, you've been hardwired to recognise patterns. And your brain will pick up on patterns uh, very quickly. Um, there's something, in fact, we, we, there's a field of research that looks into this, uh, into how the brain recognises patterns. And in Gestalt uh, psychology, and the word Gestalt comes from, from the German, and it means pattern or form or shape. Um, and it looks at how your brain uh, responds to uh, visual elements in a way that automatically reads into patterns and shapes. And, and completes a picture. For example, when you look at my face, you don't necessarily look at, you don't pick up on the individual elements of my face, you just look at my, the, 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 the combination of traits and that's how you would recognize me in a crowd. How do you recognize people in a crowd? How do, why do you not look at people's faces and see all the elements at the same time? Why when you listen to a piece of music, for instance, you recognize the melody rather than separate the individual notes but that's what they are. They're, a, they're a, a, a mess of musical notes, but somehow your brain picks up a melody out of that. So it really is remarkable how the brain will find shape and pattern and will adapt and adjust to that very easily. That's why it's so important to look at the routines that we have. Okay. Because um, one of the quickest ways to restore balance and to take control of uh, your, the way you're functioning is actually to put the right routines in place. You can be a lot more stuck in your ways and, and that means that, you know, that putting a, a, a different routine in place might feel very difficult. Um, it could take, you know, six weeks. For some people it could take longer than that. Um, but the key thing is that you can. You, you can because of the brain's adaptability. Um, so, again, how do you put the right habits in place then to restore balance? One of the things that we would strongly recommend is that people look at their um, work day, for example, and look at how they structure their work day um, and, and to ensure that they're, again, using the routine element of your brain um, <clears throat> in your favor. Yeah. And that you're either, you know, managing, oh, it's incredible what the difference that proper diary management can make in people's lives and not just uh, in terms of uh, work outcomes, but more importantly, in terms of uh, mental health. So, 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 okay, so on that, right, just to, okay, so, so one of the things that I've noticed as I've sort of, been looking at this at a, at a personal level. Mm. It's not just um, it's just not managing my diary. Mm. It's managing what goes in. It's it's managing manage is it managing the balance? Yeah. And the type of absolutely. Yeah. And go, what goes into it? The type of activities that you do. Because because one of the things that I've I've noticed over time, I used to say. Um, you know, as I was getting older, I'd say, you know, I've moved, to, you know, when you're younger, time management mm. is usually your big issue. Mm. As you start to get a bit older, your um, energy management yeah. becomes a bigger issue yeah. than your time management. But I'm starting to discover my management of these two aspects of my life mm. are actually more important than both of them. And I need both of them to be able to do these two things. Absolutely. How Am I on or am I off on that? Absolutely. Right. No, that's, that is spot on. And when you talk about um, energy management, for instance, which a lot of people talk about without quite knowing what that mm. means, um, it's exactly what we're talking about mm. here. It's this topic. That's what, ener that's what managing your energy means. It's about, you know, are you operating in the fight or flight response mode or are you operating in your parasympathetic uh, response uh, mode and really practically speaking what that means is so the parasympathetic nervous system again is the rest and digest uh, type of functioning right explain that a little bit because I've, I've that, that it's becoming it's a bit of a buzz 
yeah. statement, rest yeah, and digest. Yeah, exactly. So what that means is literally resting and digesting. <laughs> so the, the, you, the, when, when, um, when you're digesting your food, for instance, that's, that's um, uh, controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, when you're sleeping, it's your parasympathetic nervous system that is in control of your subconscious mind, of, 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 of making sure that you're still breathing, but not just that, but making sure that your brain is regenerating, that you're, um, that you're processing all the events that you went through in that day. It's the, it's the, the word processing is really key when it comes to the parasympathetic okay. nervous system. And this type of functioning is also what you need when you take a step back in your daily life, routine, etc. And this is where we're going to talk about the energy management. Yeah. And when you choose to, um, to uh, approach a topic or an activity, whatever it is, with that um, type of functioning that is not the emergency of urgent but it's actually okay I'm going to press the pause button which is exactly what it is and I choose to be reflective about this so essentially it's about self-reflective practice it's about um, stepping back and um, thinking long term for instance it's about looking at um, the the long-term picture in that particular situation rather than just the immediate that in itself, that type of functioning in itself is actually restoring balance right. and is actually doing good for you and for your brain. It's, it's, it's putting you in a place of rest and digest. Even during the work, even this is the energy management type thing. It's, it's about how you approach tasks and activities and it's also about the type of tasks and activities as well that we do, which we also need to talk about. One of the things I'm discovering is, is this, this whole, you use the term the, the reflect mm. and the long-term think, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not like just I finish my day resting and reflecting. It's not just starting my day resting and reflecting. Yeah. It's, it's almost creating an, an, it, intervals yeah. where... Um, you, it's almost like these are, are they, they like transitions or are they intervals or the, you use the term push pause. I, I'm noticing more and more, the more I think about this, the more and the more I'll say, okay, I've got a, I've got this clump of meetings, say. Mm. So I'll put a little window prior mm. in my diary and a window afterwards. That's it. In my diary. And so my, my window before is to pause, mm -hmm. slow down, think about yep. whatever, into it. If I just use meetings, for example. Yep. Then at the end of it, I pause, think about it, reflect on it, then prepare for the next one. Is that what you're talking about? Absolutely right. And you're Ooh. doing exactly the right thing okay. because that's absolutely what we what we would recommend. Uh, you know, because I have noticed, right? Mm. As it's, right, mm. I have noticed when I do that, mm. it's all better. Exactly. And when I forget to do that, it's like ah. Oh. Exactly. Because I can. So what's I know happening the difference there? Now. What's what you do there is you you take control and you intentionally instead of just keep you know if you don't do that you'll just your brain will keep going in autopilot it will keep going it will keep going and, and that's okay. when everything yep. goes out of control so what you do there is you automatically get um, you intentionally take take the reins of it and you take control and in that half an hour whatever the time is in that half an hour it doesn't it could be five minutes yeah. It's, just, it's, it's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be uh, too long. Because what I've noticed is... It could just be five minutes, right, but I'm, it's enough to Because I've balance. noticed, I've noticed, you know, this... Because when you said this, yeah. this works on something. Yeah. Because it's trying to direct me, my brain. Yeah. I've noticed how um, it's now... It's habitual. Exactly. All right, okay. That's All great. Right. And that's what a productive habit is. Okay. That's exactly it. And you know... Because um, the reason I'm speaking like this and asking the questions, because sometimes you feel like you have to make massive change to 
arrest this, I feel out of control, I'm yeah. tired, I'm, all of those, that thing. And it's, it's not massive change. It is a massive change of thinking, yeah. but it's not a massive change of behavior. No, no, absolutely. And this is what I talk about all the time when I talk about the term mental wealth. What is mental wealth? It's actually about understanding what are the small, really small investments that people can make in their daily routine, their daily life. What are the small investments that you can make that will give you the biggest returns? And that is a great example of a small investment because it's a simple thing. It's a simple thing that anyone can do. And like I said, it doesn't have to be for too long. The reflective practice could be as much as five minutes before and after a task, an activity, a meeting, whatever it is. It's got to be guilt-free. But it's, exactly. Right. No, it has to be because otherwise, if it, it's yeah, fight, that's a good flight. point. Because, yeah. then, it's because the, that was the, that, then you reactivate that was, the fight or flight. That was the thing that I Absolutely. discovered is like, I have to, I have to, Mm. guilt-free mm. allow myself to do this that's it yeah that's it and it really once once you get into the habit of doing it you know when when uh, earlier we were having a meeting uh, earlier weren't you and I, I had just left another meeting didn't I mm. and what did I say I sat down in a chair and I said before I started talking to you I just said hang on let me just get my head into this one mm. yeah and I don't know if you noticed but I took you know, maybe just a minute, but I took a minute before I said something. Maybe it was just a few seconds, but for me, that was enough. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I'm used to this. This is what I do. I don't just go from one thing to the other. I have to, and I will say, and I'll often verbalize it, and I'll say to myself and to anyone who's in the room with me. Yeah, give me a moment, yeah. Let me just get my head into this one. And that's what I'm doing. I'm literally <laughs> resetting. I just need, you just need to press the reset rather than going straight into something else. And once you learn how to reset, um, once you learn how to, you know, how to really get your head into something else and approach it in a different way, rather than just, just going into it, what you're doing there for yourself is you're, you're going into it in your sympathetic, in the fight yeah. and flight. That's not gonna help you. Okay, so, because sometimes, because it's, you know, it's the, it's, it's the rushing and I'm busy, and I have to, and I'm supposed to, mm. and all of those sorts of things. Yeah. Sometimes the the liberty, mm. right? That because it is a, it's a liberty that you have to exercise. Yeah. Um, but I think if you know, like if if I'm picking up on what what you're saying correctly, it's you know if I was to take my take my position, or maybe a lot of people that you talk to, well, they're really in control of their own time. Mm. There, all of that. So it seemed as you have the liberty to be able to do that, because often what it's perceived at is, well, I just finished a meeting, so I'm going to go do something, and mm. if I'm a call it an employee, yeah. I just can't go do something. But it's not that. It's it's just consciously making a decision to. I've just been. Yeah. Now I'm going to push pause. I'm going to reflect. I'm going to forward think a little bit. I'm going to settle everything down. Now I'm going to put my mind in the next thing. Absolutely. That and that conscious decision is something that no one else can do for you, but only you can do it and you can. Anyone but I, yeah, can do but it. But I don't need to be the CEO to have the liberty to do that. That's what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Anybody can do this. Anybody yeah. can do Just that. basic practice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And okay. the returns from doing that are incredible. Okay. So, all right. So... So we're talking about routine, so it's, it's yeah. learning to move from one thing to the other. So yeah. what, what are some of, the, some of the thoughts you have on, on routine and what the, your, the, 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 you're, give, you're giving me advice on what should be in my routine? What yeah. would you? Yeah, so in addition to the things that we've talked about already, I think um, there's something about, uh, for example, the physical exercise. Maybe let's talk about that one because a, a lot of people have some assumptions um, around physical exercise um, and they think that you know if they do um, physical exercise just per se is the answer to resetting and to getting balance and whatever and actually um, this is where we need to get smart again because it really depends on what it is that you choose to do so that so you you could classify then 
exercise into two categories. Exactly. Intense right. physical exercise yeah. will only reactivate your sympathetic nervous system. Even the anticipation of intense physical activity will activate your SNS. If I, said, wow. if I said to you now, Gary, I will, in a couple of minutes, I'll ask you to stand up and then I'll ask you to do five push-ups. Instantly, just the anticipation of that will trigger your sympathetic nervous system. Your heart rate will start beating, your heart will beat faster. So me, so me having an intense day and running out and doing CrossFit or having um, doing box exercise maybe yeah. is not... It's not the best type of exercise to try and calm myself down? It could be great for other things, but <laughs> not if you're trying to restore your rest and digest. No. So, so we've got um, to really... So, all right, this is... Because I, I do think this is, there is a misconception, which I yeah. think you've really highlighted, that, yeah, there's exercise, but there is exercise. Yeah. What if the same as... If you're talking about your routine and your balance, and because we're talking about energy management exactly. which is really getting into that I've got my emotional yeah things in order and I'm, I'm getting this balance so all right so all right this is fascinating so all the right. type so the type of exercise that will help you reactivate your parasympathetic nervous system will be light exercise um, and and things like you know things like walking and going for a walk things like uh, you know yoga stretching the, those sorts of activities will facilitate the rest and digest type of functioning and will enable you to um, to restore balance any type of intense physical activity such as the examples that you mentioned will do just the opposite okay they will trigger so so, so things like for example i'm gonna so i could go for a run which people some people go but when i go for a run it's very calming yeah. and, very, and then some people go for a run and they've got a podcast in and they're listening to someone <laughs> yeah exactly so again that's not helping you i mean it could help again it could help with other things like marathon training and whatever but if we're talking about restoring the balance stepping back um, reactivating your parasympathetic nervous system to achieve a healthier uh, type of operating then that's not going to help you because yeah. that sort of multitasking is actually um, triggering all sorts of reactions in I, your yeah. sympathetic nervous system, not the other one. Because I think, because you know, like, so I want to, I want to be, I want to perform well. I, all of that we're talking about mental health and performance, yeah. and all that. So my my physical well being, as in my body, there are certain exercise I can do that is is brilliant for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about my mental well being. Yeah, I have to be careful not to assume that all exercise. Is beneficial to my mental well-being. Exactly. Well -being, right? exactly. That's, That's exactly helpful. it. Yeah. That's exactly it. So it's really again going back to your um, uh, question from earlier. You know, unpack the type of routine and the type of of, of habits that we can put in place. Again, it, it really is about thinking um, uh, very uh, intentionally about the types of um, external um, triggers that you choose to, to, to put around okay, you yeah. to create the best conditions or the worst conditions. And that's what it is. Um, and again, what you need to remember is that the uh, sympathetic nervous system is externally driven um, and, and it will automatically... So that's all circumstantially demanded. Right. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. And it will automatically react to all sorts of external stimuli um, and will therefore kick in and respond in a certain way uh, when actually what you're trying to do is you're trying to create the best conditions in your external environment using the right stimuli that will um, that will activate the other one right. it, because that's what you need to do to achieve okay. balance. All right, get, let's get practical. Just so if you if I if I come to you and I so I right I go I I'm tired. I've got I've got I'm, I'm fatigued. I'm a, I just find myself, I, I'm sitting there, I just can't concentrate. I feel like everything's pressuring me. My sleep pattern is all over the place. Um, you use the term, I've got emotional numbness. Mm -hmm. And I want to, which basically, you've just said to me, you live in your whole life in your, mm -hmm. um, on, in fight or flight type mode. 
I've got to establish a routine that's going to get a get me get me balanced. What yeah. just practical terms? What does a balanced routine? Yeah. How would you give me a starting point? I'm going to yeah. almost as if I, I've come to you now and I've said, all right, I'm out of control. Yeah. And you're going to say, okay, we're going to do this to put you back in control. Exactly. And really this, let's go there then. And, and practically speaking, this will be the, the basics, I guess. Yep. But it's important to explain also that this will look, obviously it will be different for different people depending on the circumstance. And I would always work with my client to understand what, what um, particular circumstances we can control in that person's environment, etc. Because those will yep. be different for each person. But there will be um, a few basic things that, that will work for everyone and that anyone can create. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, the yeah, the so, first so thing be, that I will so, say... So generally, so yeah. we're talking about, I could be a CEO, I could be a school teacher. Or you could, exactly, could be, exactly. Um, you could be 60 or you could be 20. Okay, that's yeah, exactly right, it. So yeah. the, this is the basics. Um, the, the first thing, obviously, that, we, that I would have done is we would have had this conversation and probably establish that your condition is... is adrenaline poisoning basically because wow. of being in yeah. in sympathetic nervous system for too long that's what that's what it is yeah um and and really the basics are <laughs> and it, it is very basic so um, just on that i'll just i yeah. just you, you use the term adrenaline poisoning right so so is this you know so, sometimes you you, are, you can find yourself or you can observe people that that because do you get addicted to adrenaline? <laughs> yes. Right? Where, yes. Where can it's take, a vicious cycle. Where it can yeah. take a problem, yeah. and every problem is escalated yeah. into a crisis that needs to be managed. Is that a? Yeah. Is that? Again, you know, again, and it could be for all sorts of reasons as right. well. But it, but again, it's likely that your brain has fallen into that pattern of okay. responding. Always to managing things. a crisis. Exactly. Always got a crisis. Exactly. Right. Yep. Because you are always in a state of crisis. If you are operating in urgency, in urgent mode, in sympathetic nervous system, your brain will be receiving adrenaline all the time. Great. Um, okay. And and it's just it's it's addicted to that cycle. <laughs> That's what it is. So really, it's about breaking the cycle. Um, all right. So let's get practical. So right. let's get practical. Back to the basics. The basics are first of all sleep. There's a reason why the parasympathetic nervous system is also known as rest and digest. So really those two elements are absolutely essential. How are your sleeping patterns? What do you do before you go to bed? You know, it's really going down to the basics, ensuring that people are getting enough sleep is one of the most important things because again, the, 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 the regenerative power of sleep in the brain is huge. And when you don't get that, um, the impact is, is massive as well. So. Um, really going into the sleep patterns, uh, but also the digestion. And we talk about this uh, a lot because it is very important making sure that people take proper time to eat, for instance, which um, most people see it as a luxury these days. And most people don't even, you know, in the city, most people don't even eat lunch. They just keep going yeah. with a sandwich and whatever. So really the basics of making sure that you're eating properly, making sure that you're sleeping, and making sure that you're um, removing as many external stressors as you can. Now, this, this, this represents two things. Um, not just uh, actually removing the external stressors, which could be about diary management, blah, 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 um, making sure that you only look at emails at a certain time in your day, or whatever that looks like for you, or whatever is possible and doable, but it's also internally how you choose to approach things. And it's back to what I was saying earlier. Um, it's breaking the cycle of staying in urgent mode and you know, creating the right transitions. And I really like that word. It is creating the right transitions between one thing and the other, rather than just going and going and going and, and staying in that mode. Yeah. So that's, these, these are basic things that anyone can do and any really people are in charge of this they are in charge of you know how they're looking after themselves in terms of sleeping and eating 
and they are in charge in how they're looking after things, how they go about their daily life in terms of actually choosing to press the pause and reset button in between activities. Yeah, yeah. And the third thing that I would also recommend is to really put some more pauses into their work uh, day. Um, and in those pauses, it is very important to physically remove yourself sometimes from the environment that is um, charged with uh, external uh, triggers and pressure points. So sometimes it really is worth it to, to physically walk out of the office and go outside for 10 minutes even, just for a walk and, and, and feel the sun. And, good old smoke and break. Good old smoke break if that does it. But it really, yeah. it's, it is about physically removing yourself from your environment and that can do wonders in terms of resetting everything. Um, these are things that are basic and pretty much everyone and anyone can do these things. But, but, but then also it's the, it's the, so if I'm going to establish a routine, mm. right? So I've got to, if I think of exercise, I think of exercise that is good for my mental well-being. Absolutely. And I think of exercise that is good for my physical. Physical fitness. Fi fitness, yeah. physical, yeah. call it physical. Yeah. Um, well-being. If I think of um, when I move from one thing mm. to the next thing, I just don't move from one thing to the next thing. I, I move. I pause. You reflect. Pause, you transition. Yeah. Transition to the next thing. Yeah. Um, and just getting those because it, it's not. It's not like it's not a massive change of life from what I understand from what I'm hearing yep. but it's a massive change in approach yes and it's a massive change in approach in mindset in, yeah. in the way you think about how you live basically um, if you're able to shift your mindset with these basics when it comes to how you approach things the returns are huge they really are and and they can literally change and these are the things that will uh, represent the the difference between when you look at performers and the top performers in organizations these are the things that will represent the difference between the best and the rest right it's how people are able how certain people are able to manage themselves versus the ones that are able to manage everything else but if they're not managing themselves at some point something's going to break so th there is an out of control routine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you can be fully organized, but be in an out of control routine. Yeah. So how do I get into a routine that is... Yeah. Because I, as I said, I could be the CEO and I just start with my first meeting mm. and they just go mm. and I, I break with lunch but it's a business lunch yeah and that business lunches are never light then I go then it's a business dinner and they're never yeah. light and I start yeah. up the next day and I go again but it's good in five months time I get six weeks off and I'm supposed to be okay yeah right if yeah. I'm a someone who's doing other jobs it's more about the understanding I have to move. Um, go. Yeah. Is it? It's so, it, yeah, it's the transitions, absolutely, and how people make choices in terms of transitions. There's another practi really practical thing as well, yeah. actually, but this is very specific. It probably uh, it only makes sense for certain people, obviously not, not for everyone, but it's incredible how a good executive assistant will contribute uh, to this because good executive assistants will look after um, their, their people very well, actually, and, and most of them um, know this and most of them actually know how to, how to put proper time and how to, yeah, they, they actually manage. You, you find some really good people out there in terms of supporting them and making sure that they have the right breaks and the appropriate um, uh, allocation of time from one thing to the other, etc. This, this only makes sense for certain people, so never mind. But um, 
but I think, but even in those situations, actually, then still the onus is on the individual in terms of how they approach things. Yeah. So again, it's the importance of, yeah. that's why I'm focusing on that, because it's the stuff that you can control. Okay. Um, and I think... All right, but, but, but uh, I'm mindful of people watching what we're talking about. Some yeah. people do have an executive assistant. Yeah. Some people don't. Some people go, I don't even feel like I have the freedom to do these things. But in reality, whether we're that, how do you say, carrying that much responsibility that you do have an executive assistant. Yeah. You might only be carrying this much responsibility, which means you are in control of your life, your time. Yeah. Um, or you might think, well, I'm just, a, I'm just, right? It's yeah, what yeah. the terms, we love to use the words I'm just. I'm just an employee, but the truth is you still have control of your life. So the, the routine whether it's someone who's helping you with it because you're too busy to do it yourself, yeah. whether, yes, you have the freedom to do it yourself, or you feel like, I don't have the freedom because I'm someone else is paying for my time, mm -hmm. the, the routine is still important. And exactly. I've, got to, I've got to recognize if I can just get a balance of, of I'm, I'm, I'm going for it, yeah. and I'm just, so to, so to speak, allocating take a breath, exactly. going for it, I'm taking a breath, and get get that balance, Exactly. whatever, where it is, this, this routine of... Yeah, and getting that balance right is really important. And the, the other thing, actually, that we haven't talked about yet, but is also important in that, um, is it's making sure that throughout your routine and throughout, throughout the day, um, you're actually doing things that help restore your energy levels. Okay. Yep. And, and, and that, you know, you have the, the energy drainers and you have the fillers, if you like, the things yep. that give, the things that give, literally give you a sense of energy and the things that to you drain you. Now, this is very different for, for different people, in fact. In fact, it's, it's likely that it'll, it'll be very, that what gives you energy is probably very different to what gives me energy. So each, each of us will have different things that we feel uh, recharge us, almost like putting the phone in the, the charging yeah, yeah. phone. That, so, that's what it is. So how much is that to do? You know, some people go, you know, are you, do you refuel by being with people or do you refuel by being alone? Yeah, and, and right. it's, it's understanding yourself a little bit. Exactly, it's that those... self-awareness, understanding that, and not even just you know refueling by being with people. It's not even it's deeper than that because it's about which people, for instance. Yeah. You know, you, you might be an extrovert, but it's not it, not everyone's going to do it for you. So it, it's really understanding yourself and and what charges you, uh, what recharges you, and what doesn't and trying to stay in control of that throughout the day as well. And making sure that if you have to go through periods of intense activity, which, which a lot of people do, um, where they don't necessarily have the ability to put enough rest breaks in between things, etc., etc., and you're still in charge of your transitions mm. because yeah. you can, anyone yeah. can. So you, you're still doing your transitions, getting your mind into this, now into the other, da, 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 da. But sometimes there's a really intense week that you know you can't get away from. It's making sure that you already plan in advance for the, the rest and digest type of thing, the restorative okay. yeah. activities um, that you will do to make sure that you're, you'll be recharged uh, at the end of it. And just one more thing on that one. What's interesting about that is that it's the anticipation of uh, rest uh, what that also does for you and your brain. In fact, the anticipation of stress or rest creates the same neurochemical reaction in your brain. Okay. That's yeah. why it feels really good, by the way, to think about your next holiday. When you're sitting in the office and you just, you're thinking about the, I don't know, Caribbean holiday that you have coming up. It already, you, you will experience the same neurochemical reaction that you will once you're there. So even setting time to think about the things that re-energize you okay. right. actually already does it for you. So in, you know, not, not trying to summarize, but so I'm out of control and, um, and uh, I'm talking about my mental health when it comes yeah. to performance. If I understand that all I've got to, I've got to get a balance between these, um, these, this one coin, yeah. my 
fight or flight, the, 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 the go for it side of things, and the um, I'm resting, I'm allowing everything to calm down. All I have to think about is a routine that's taking me in and out yeah. of that. Is that oversimplification? Um, yes and no, actually. Okay, yes, it's, uh, it's really simplifying it, but actually that's the secret of all of this, isn't it? Is to, is to somehow bring all of this understanding and all of this huge body of research into how your brain works and making that simple enough and tangible enough that anyone can do it. So, yes, that is it. It is about giving yourself a routine or a, um, you know, the, the, the productive habits of knowing how to step in and out of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Because again, it is about balance. If, you, if you're able to function in balance, then you're able to perform well. If you're out that's of balance... That's the balance of those two things. That's it. Because sometimes people get into work, life balance, mm -mm. No. work, family... Because no, 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 work no. and family can be as intense as each other. Exactly. So, so we're talk, it's, it's the balance of these two... Yeah, it's the internal balance. Yeah, that we're it's looking for. Exactly. It's okay. the internal balance. And that comes down to two things. It's self-awareness, which is why we're talking about this stuff, yeah. so that people understand how this works, self-awareness, and not just understanding how your brain works, but understanding yourself, what, what feels good to you, what doesn't, what, what helps you relax, what doesn't help you relax, so really self-awareness. And number two is self-regulation, self-management, if you like. That's what it is. It's understanding yeah. how it works and then adapting. But it's also, it. what's good is, is understanding what it is you're trying to self-manage. Yeah, exactly. What it is you're trying to self-regulate. Exactly. Um, is really important. Well, that's yeah. been awesome. Thanks.